Imagine 2035, east of Taiwan, a cloud breaks open and down drops a swarm of 8-meter drones, each lugging missiles cheaper than your SUV. They turn tighter, see farther, and outnumber every legacy fighter in the neighborhood. Game over for Top Gun, right? So why, if that future's already on the whiteboard, did Washington just cut a NGAD check for multiple tens of billions? And why is Beijing doubling down on the J-20B and a hush-hush sixth-gen bird? Because the one thing no algorithm can fake is a human staring at chaos and deciding, nah, I'm not pulling the trigger today. Sure, drones are cheap, expendable, and breeding like mosquitoes. A Reaper's hourly tab is about one-tenth an F-35s, and the coming CCA, loyal wingmen promise to drop the bill even lower. They can pull 9 Gs until their wings fall off and, if one goes down, nobody's writing condolence letters. But every red team war game since 2020 tells the same bedtime story. Once the daddling hiccups, and it will under real jamming, the swarm's IQ flatlines. In one classified run, 62% of autonomous drones couldn't relock a target after a single GPS spoof. Over in the East China Sea, two out of three experimental Chinese surface drones wandered off toward merchant traffic the moment Beidou blinked. Cheap's great until the mission absolutely, positively can't fail. When a radar warning blares, a pilot has two heartbeats to ID the emitter, guess intent, check the ROE, and choose shoot, jam, or turn cold. Today's narrow AI nails the first step, sometimes the second, almost never the third, and forget the last. That gap matters because both capitals treat great power war like a ladder, one misread rung and you're in free fall. A drone punching a hole through the wrong fishing trawler, or worse, a 737, hands the other side the moral megaphone and maybe a few treaty allies. A human in the cockpit is an insurance policy against, oops. Plus. Adversaries know this. When an air wing parks off the first island chain, the real message isn't the bombs. It's the pilot who can decide to drop, or not. Drones? They're lousy at signaling restraint. You can't stare down a circuit board. Yes, AI aces keep thrashing human pilots in sims. But those victories come with babysitting. Perfect sensors, zero jamming, and no cyber gremlins. Up in the real sky, physics still wins. AI needs clean data, one chaff cloud and the optical trackers blind, one AESA radar in burst mode and the drone's receivers drowning, until quantum-grade sensors and self-healing waveforms graduate from slide deck to flight line, the only reliable data fuser is a squishy human brain strapped to an ejection seat. Swarms? Still embryonic. The Air Force's Golden Horde linked four cruise missiles in 2021, call it the drone version of parallel parking. China flew 56 fixed-wing drones in formation at Zhuhai, but they were marching to a preloaded playlist. Real, adaptive, talk among yourselves swarms are still science fair projects, not squadrons. Attritable, sounds sexy until the invoice lands. The Pentagon wants CCAs at 2 or 3 million a pop. The first Skyborg prototypes already cost 8 million before you bolt them to a jet. Lose 20 of those in a week and you've just burned an entire F-35. America builds about 6,000 small drones a year. China's Shenzhen ecosystem? 60,000. That 10 to 1 ratio is why Beijing fields whole unmanned divisions yet still funds the J-20B and a rumored twin-seat J-36. Crude jets are the insurance policy. When the drone pipeline chokes, say, because rare earth shipments from Myanmar dry up you still need factories that can stamp titanium spars for manned fighters. Flip the map and it's the same story. China prints drones, but it still buys Western lithography for AI chips. A manned jet that can fly without those chips? That's Beijing's plan B. There's no drone lobby like the fighter mafia. 38 US states have parts in the F-35. Chengdu alone employs 40,000 building J-20s. Axing the pilot doesn't axe the paychecks, but it does axe swing state districts. Congress still writes crew ratios into law. The Senate wants 386 squadrons, mostly crewed, so the industrial base stays healthy. Across the Pacific, promotion boards still score officers by manned aircraft flight hours, until drone commanders pin on stars, 
the bias stays baked in. And let's be honest, a 6th gen fighter doing a high speed pass at Zhuhai or Nellis is a global media mic drop. A pallet of drones rolled out in cardboard? Not exactly TikTok gold. Check the budget lines, not the headlines. Next year the US Air Force will take 24 F-35s and 1000 CCAs. China's 2025 budget pairs the H-20 bomber with the GJ-11 stealth drone. Same playbook, manned quarterback, drone-wide receivers. NGAD's cockpit will steer a screen of loyal wingmen while the pilot loiters above the threat zone. Two-seat J-20Bs already fly with a backseater tapping icons on a tablet. Pilot handles politics, ethics, and the big picture, the swarm does the dull, dirty, dangerous stuff. This hybrid setup buries the old replacement myth. It's not one platform beating another, it's a system of systems that's more survivable, and far easier to sell to Congress or the Central Military Commission, than any single gadget. Next time someone claims drones will extinct pilots, remind them, Washington and Beijing aren't buying jets out of nostalgia. They're buying time. Time for AI to get trustworthy, for data links to get unjammable, for attrition to get cheap. Until then, the cockpit stays the last firewall between a screw-up and a war nobody wanted. If this helped you sound smart at your next barbecue, hit like so the algorithm learns humans still matter. Drop a comment. Which drone limitation will take longest to fix? And if you want the classified line items on NGAD's budget, the next video's right here.